joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. Thank you for watching us later. Just thank you for being a part of this show. Of course, we're going to be visiting with um, Greg Orovec, the Port St. Lucie Mayor, in just a short little bit. But I always want to start my show off with our sponsor. Our sponsor has been so wonderful to us over the past couple of years that they've been our partner in the show. In fact, um, Mid Florida has come into <clears throat> our area and really expanded on their community service and have taken over so many endeavors to further our community. In fact, there is the Mid Florida Event Center, formerly the PSL Civic Center. So we're so excited to welcome from Mid Florida Credit Union, Jonathan Abreu. Jonathan, are you with us? I'm with you. And Jonathan, you brought a special guest this morning as well. You want you guys often do that, and I appreciate that. Appreciate that as well. You um, bring some of your vendors on, some of the nonprofits that you work with, so we can learn a, a little bit more about everything that you're involved in. So, who'd you bring with you today? Uh, Chris Clow with us. Chris Clow is, is from a representative of Paychex, and um, he well, he'll explain in further details everything he does for us. Well, welcome, Chris. Are you with us? I am with you. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. We talked briefly before the show, and uh, I mentioned I am a Paychex, Paychex user and have been very grateful for them, especially during this time of crisis. Um, one of the things that I want to point out that Paychex did for us is they had all of our reports that we needed for um, applying for different loans and programs ready to go in a, in a tight little area on our website. So thank you to Paychex for that. We appreciate that very much. But tell everybody at home a little bit about what Paychex does. Absolutely. Um, well, I'll just kind of briefly go over Paychex, the value of working with Paychex, and, and a little bit more of what we do. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty new to the company, I'm going to be honest with you, but I have a background in, in consulting with businesses. I'm really happy to work with businesses. Um, that's what I take a pride in is actually helping them fix all their problems. Uh, so what Paychex does, you know, we've been open 50 years, um, and we started just as a payroll provider. So as soon as people hear the word paychecks, they automatically assume we're just a payroll provider. And, and we're a lot more than that. Um, so we actually have a scalable solution that can help you from hire to retire, um, anywhere from just basic payroll all the way up to full service HR. Uh, you know, we can help out, bring on benefits, retirement, and everything like that. Um, onboarding, recruiting, wherever you need help, we can be there for you. Um, and, and mainly right now, our big thing, because uh, COVID-19 has really hurt a lot of businesses, um, we've been able to kind of support them, A, and, and giving them back uh, some new compliance updates, helping them with some handbooks, making sure they're bringing back out their employees, making sure they don't have any extra fines on top of that. Um, but also, we've been supporting them with the PPP loan. You know, we were able to have signature-ready reports for application, um, and then mainly right now with the forgiveness, we actually have signature ready reports when you go to apply for your forgiveness. So our, we're really trying to make sure that you get the maximum forgiveness. And then circling back to the compliance side, you know, COVID shocked our world. There's been a lot of new changes that you have to keep up with. Um, you know, you're able to work with us. You know, we've been giving away free HR, a couple free months of payroll and, and just being there to make sure that we support the businesses. And since we don't do contracts, you know, a lot, a lot of people have just used us and, and just, just for the time being, and that's perfectly fine. You know, we want to make sure everybody makes it through. Um, and like I said, I always want to circle back to paychecks, not just being a payroll provider, we're full service. Um, I, I'm the new rep in the area. I cover Port St. Lucie, Martin County. I go all, as west to Okeechobee. So if you're in the area, you can always reach out to me. I'd always love to even just come to talk to you. Um, you don't even need to use me. I'll, I'll come talk to you. And if you have any questions, I can always answer them for you. Well, welcome to the community. We appreciate you being here. Um, and you're right, Paychex is a, a full service provider, HR, everything. They do do everything. Um, you can even get your insurance through the programs that they offer at Paychex, which we also do. Uh, the pricing is, is very, very um, competitive. And so if somebody wants to reach out to you, they're interested in signing up for Paychex, what should they do, Chris? Well, they can, they can reach out to me directly. Uh, first of all, my name is Chris Clow. My email is my first initial last name, so cclow at paychex.com. Um, and I'll give you my cell phone number. That's 561-809-9224. Uh, um, you can call me, text me, email me. I'll, I'll answer pretty much any time of day, um, or I'll get back within you know 30 minutes if it's after hours. Uh, but yeah, and, and I'll, I'll, I don't know if there's a chat feature, but I can throw that in there and that way people can see it as well. 
Thank you, Chris. And thank you to Mid Florida for sponsoring again, as always, and bringing us something different. Um, we're all familiar with Mid Florida. It is a credit union. They have several locations here in the city of Port St. Lucie, and they are a not-for-profit. So, Jonathan, before we go, is there anything you need to tell us on the Mid Florida side? Well, um, the couple things I can review are some of the little promotions that we currently have going on right now. Um, I did come ready with my shirt. This is our new promotion. So basically, uh, we are raffling away a 2017 Dodge uh, Charger. Um, so basically, every time you swipe um, your debit or credit card for a purchase, you'll be automatically entered into a giveaway for that vehicle. Um, so simple enough, just use your debit or credit card. Um, we, you know, other little promotions we have a 2.5% uh, cash back credit card. Um, you know, we, we understand, as Chris mentioned, uh, that there are a lot of businesses out there that are, you know, currently struggling given the pandemic. So, um, we are also offering, uh, $600 for new business accounts. So we understand that there's a lot of financial in institutions out there that are currently charging just to maintain an account. Um, come check us out. Okay. Very so. good. And what office are you located at? Um, I have been bouncing between St. Lucie West and the US-1 uh, branch. So I am currently right now at the US-1 location. Very good. Mid-Florida Credit Union's website before we take a short break and come back with the mayor. Oh. Uh, Midflorida.com. Midflorida.com. Simple enough. Thanks for being with us, Jonathan. Thank you to Chris for coming in as well via Zoom. It's nice to see you all. We are going to take a short break. We'll be right back with the city of Port St. Lucie, Honorable Mayor Gregory Orovec. Welcome back to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. Remember, I am Teresa Aronson. We are from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce, a nonprofit organization that partners with the city. Thank you, city, for allowing us to do this every single month to get some good information out to our public. Please welcome the one, the only, the mayor of the beautiful city of Port St. Lucie, Gregory Orovec. Good morning. Yeah, see, we let you use our space, our equipment, and call it your show. Isn't yes. that amazing? I know, I know. Very you sit on your dais, and, and uh, yeah, I introduce you. It's the people's dais. It is the people's dais. It is the people's dais. But we're very appreciative because you know that we are a nonprofit. We're always constantly trying to get money or get uh, information out, and then we have to self-sustain. We're not a government entity and, and not subsidized by any government. So... I see all the Facebook comments. You're supported. You are supported by some governments, just like your uh, investors or your, yeah. your members. We members. love the chamber. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's critically important to the vibrancy of, of our community and the, the business community, of our economy. We love you. We appreciate you. We know it's a difficult time. And uh, know that you're working hard with your members to do everything you can. I hope that your board is uh, well yeah. and uh, everyone is, is doing okay. Well, actually, we did have some sickness on my board. I won't uh, name names. I didn't want to name names, but I just yeah. want him to know that we're thinking about him. Yes. Um, and uh, actually symptomatic, which a lot of people don't see. Uh, we've heard of a lot of positive tests, but my, I have experienced some symptomatic board members. And it was quite scary for all of us. I can't imagine how scary it was for him and his family, but he is um, he's tested negative. And yes. we're so excited about that. Did he get two negatives yet? I think he did get two negatives. It took two. a while. Yes, it took a very long time. And they told him up front that it will take a while to get two negative tests in a row. But that has finally happened. But it has been a long journey um, for him. But we are wishing him well right now. And, and, and he was not uh, an elderly person. No, 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 no. And he was type O. I went through all the questions. You know, as soon as he told me, I'm like, okay, I need to dig in. I need to know <laughs> this, this, this. But he was uh, type O. He has no underlying health uh, concerns, and uh, young, younger, younger than we are. And so, um, yeah, it does. Affect. It's and it's random. Of course, there was other positive people among his group, and uh, m most of them did not exhibit symptoms. So it really does sort of pick and choose. It's a very persnickety little virus, is it not? And I'm hoping it doesn't choose me, which I want to bring up. I started the show and I did my um, exchange with our sponsor, who we're very grateful for. And I did that sans mask. And then you came in and 
we are six feet apart, but we went back and revisited the ordinance, which I promote all the time on all of my shows. There is a mask ordinance in play. We are under an order for mask face coverings. And we dissected it. And it turns out this is a public place accessible by the public. So in this room at City Hall, we really should be wearing masks. We should. Yes, yes. And I think that there was confusion even for me because there's really not anybody in here today except for our staff and, and one guest. And we're more than six feet apart. But if you read the letter of the ordinance in any public place, uh, we should you should have your mask on sure. regardless of your distance. If we were outside and could maintain social distance, you're good. Yep. If we're actively eating or drinking, yep. we're fine. But technically, because this is a public space and it's public facing, yes, we should be wearing our mask. And it's really no different than running into, into our favorite grocery store, Publix or Aldi or, or what have you. Sam's can't go to Costco here, but Sam's Club, whatnot. Yeah, Sam's Club. And, and it's funny, if you're in your private office and you're six feet apart, good. you're good. But this, the dais. It's if, not a private office. This is not the a private people's office. dais. This is the people's dais. And so since they can come in here, and this is open to the public, anybody can come in here at any moment, we all should be wearing masks. So if we, we all are now. We're following. And when I say people's dies, you really should think of The Rock. If you're familiar with The Rock's character when he was uh, wrestling in the WWE. Oh, The Rock. The Rock, yes. This is The, the People's Dies. Yes, The Rock. Um, uh, a big it's important for me to have bald heroes. So you understand this, right? Yeah, I, it, there is a trend with your heroes, with your, <laughs> your loyalties. It's uh, bald. I'm not going that way, just so you know. No, you, you do you. I'm keeping my hair. All right, we are live on Facebook. What else? I want to also talk about, since we're talking about masks and all that stuff, is you can, you have a link to the ordinance. I have a link to the ordinance. It is at stlucyco.gov. You can read the full ordinance. You and I have talked about it at great length. Everybody knows you and I are pro-mask. Um, and, and we're seeing our numbers drop. You saw that? You're, you're following that? We're seeing some, some numbers go down. Yes, the trend, it's always good to see that, that trend uh, head downward that's the right direction a lot of people have gotten sick many people too many people have died i i think it's pretty straightforward at this point the virus is out there if we let our guard down and think that oh yay everything would be everything is normal we can just go do normal stuff a couple weeks later you're gonna start to see that spike mm -hmm. more and more people are gonna get sick and then after a little bit of time more and more people are gonna go to the hospital and then after a little bit more time, more and more people will die. It's really that simple until something changes. And most likely what has to change is the development of an effective wide scale vaccine. Mm -hmm. But for that to work, enough people have to take it. And right now, polls say that only about 40 something percent of people are going to take it. And many people said they're not going to take it. Oh, well, that's kind of like saying, and some people do say this, oh, I'm not going to take my measles, mumps, and rubella shot. And I'm just going to go to school. And I'm just going to, you can't do that, people. I don't know why we're going away from science and everything that got us uh, to, where, to where we were before we kind of started uh, having some vibrations at high speed here. I don't want to say the wheels are coming off, but we're not as strong as we should be. And this is the time, and I'm sure I'll get a couple of, choice uh, comments after this, but really that's how I feel. I really think it's that straightforward. So we need to stay vigilant. We need to do what we're supposed to do. I know there's strong feelings about masks, but I don't know what the big deal about this is. If you wear the, the right mask and you either have a triple ply surgical mask or you have a homemade multi-layered mask, you're gonna be in good shape. You're gonna be better off than not wearing it. And you put it on and then you, you take it off. And when you're in your car, you go back home or you're in the back of your office. I don't understand what the big deal is. I think it's a small price to play if it helps us progress in the fight against COVID. So you and I are on the same page with that. Vaccines are a whole other ball game. You are going to probably get some choice emails. That's always really fun. That is um, always hotly debated. And it's so funny at, at our annual Thanksgiving with just my children. And we had dissension amongst the ranks and just our small little family on vaccines. But I am also pro-vaccine, so, so I'm not going to argue with you there either. I would get it now if, my, if they would let me. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make sure no one uh, went the wrong way in the study. Yeah. You know, no one grew a like a third eyeball or something. Uh, there was an excessive uh, mortality. Uh, it didn't disproportionately affect bald guys. I'll be looking for those kinds how's of things. It gonna, how's it going to affect you? You're going to grow hair all of a sudden? <laughs> well, you know, then I'm sure many more people would take it if that were the exactly. case. And that's true. Um, the reality is, is you always need a length of time to establish the clear effects of any vaccine. And we just... But, but I mean, let's go back in time. You think that if our... If, you know, our grandparents, ah, screw it. We're just going to get polio. No, they didn't do that. Well, some did. How, for how long? Not very long. They got it. They got it, and then that was not, it didn't end well for them. Well, the reality is, is that I think that, and I did sign up to try to be a part of a study, but I've got, my family is like, no, you can't do it because we don't know the long-term effects, but I'm going to need this thing within a year, I think. And I don't know if we know any more about it in a year from now than we do right now. So if, if I had 10 years to sit back and see how it affects everybody, great. I just don't have that kind of time. So for me, I'm ready to go. Ready to get it today. Well, the thing, I was, the thing I was reflecting on today for the, the people that are going to be against it, don't want to take it, don't believe that COVID's a real thing, think it's overhyped, it's yeah. nothing more than the flu. Explain the market behavior. Regardless of governmental regulation, explain what the economy and the private markets are doing. So if you look at the analyses from uh, uh, the major financial institutions and students of the market, the gears of the economy, they're all acting based on what they're seeing. So even if you don't believe government, what about all the financial analysts and the business cycle and everything that's saying, oh, well, we're not gonna see a recovery, not a real one, until, until we get a vaccine and we don't have to worry about people getting sick. So I, even if we as individuals don't price it in and we don't believe what the government's saying about it, we don't believe what the press is saying about it, the captains of industry, the, you know, the yeah. economy. Capitalism the, bends for no one. They yeah. are not going to be a part of your global you know, conspiracy if it costs them money. And I think you can take that to the bank. Yeah, so they're, they're making decisions based on what they're seeing on their expertise and, and they're going in, in the same way. So yeah. we, we really do have to just remain vigilant. And every time that we let up, we should expect that we're going to see a surge. I do want to say, though, that I, I kind of see everybody's side of everything. And, and, and even if I don't agree with you, I feel that I think as Americans, you're allowed to feel however you want. I'm never going to get in an argument with somebody. I'm not going to the mat. It's not the hill I'm going to die on. If that's what you believe, I'm not sure if, if somebody is confronted in the middle of a Publix about their mask that you're going to change their mind. So for me, I understand that people are not going to get on board with what we're doing and they're not going to change their beliefs. And it is not up to me as an individual to, to confront them. It is just up to me as an individual to do my part. So I, I don't like it when people are confronting people out in public. I don't think it ends well for anybody. And I think that those things can escalate. So I always try to warn against that. And I feel bad for these workers in publics that have to go tell these people that are, are, are fanatically, adamantly opposed to wearing a mask that for their, their small hourly wage, they have to confront people about such a hot, hotbed issue. So that's unfortunate, too. So for me, I think it's just doing the courteous thing. What, no matter what you believe, please don't cause anybody strife over this. Just sort of get through it. Well, I appreciate that message. You know, there's a time and place for everything, and I don't think you're going to change someone's mind in the, the heat of the, the battle or the, yeah. the moment of conflict. And we really should treat other people how we want to be treated. So if you are upset that someone's asking you to wear a mask on private property, so one, think about that. You're going into someone else's property. You, you think it's yours. It's not. It's not the people's dais. It's a store owned by a corporation. Right. So one, they have a right to put, enforce their own rules. But then two, you're upset that someone's telling you what to do and you think you can put your hands on somebody? A poor kid at Publix or a poor lady? Come on, that's, it's ridiculous. that's irrational, it's wrong.
it is irrational, um, but oftentimes, and you know this better than most people would, I'm sure, you can't rationalize with the irrational. Well, it's hard to rationalize your rational behavior. You can't do it. Yep. No, no, can't be done. So also, I wanted to mention in this whole mask vein and this whole COVID thing, um, this the county has received CARES Act monies. They are currently trying to help small business with those monies. You can get up to $7,500. If you are a brick and mortar business in St. Lucie County with one to 10 employees, you are a for-profit business that does not exceed $1 million in revenue every year. I would, I beg of you to please head over to the county's website, our website, the EDC's website, and fill out that application. Because remember, with CARES Act money, whatever we can't justify keeping here in our community will not stay in our community. So every $7,500 you bring in, it's going to trickle down to all of our businesses. So I feel that if you meet that criteria, it is, it is really your duty to apply for that money so we can keep it here. It's kind of like the census. Do your part so we can keep money in our community. It's very, very, very important. All right, so nice segue, good work. It's like you used to do this or something. I know. But uh, so you could lose up to $1,600 per year per uncounted citizen in the census. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't believe and hey, the Constitution says that the country will do a census every 10 years and we should do that. And it's been done since the beginning of our country. So we should do that. Well, if, you, if those arguments don't appeal to you, how about the dollars and cents one yep. that that impacts the federal investment in our community? And it also obviously impacts our representation. Mm -hmm. So no matter what your viewpoint is, you should want as much representation as possible. And to get there in a growing community, you make sure everyone's counted so that when the congressional districts are redrawn, you get the appropriate amount of representation. So the census is really important. The city of Port St. Lucie, we're over 70% now, we're doing well. Uh, we beat 2010. But somehow Sebastian Sewell's point are beating us. So come on, Port St. Lucie. Well, Sewell's point Let's is Let's get like, out there. It's a dot. Yeah, and they're all rich. So, you know, come on. <laughs> let's beat those richy riches over there. But there, it's a very small community that are probably a little more. Well, their average income is definitely higher. It than is us. one of the wealthiest zip codes <laughs> in the country. That's a fact. Google it. And our old friend Michelle is the city manager now, and I'm sure she's going to get Ooh, word of I'm this. I'm going to tell her you called her old. Uh, uh, I said old friend. <laughs> I didn't call Michelle old. You just said old no, twice, no, 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 three no, no, times. No, 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 no. All right, all right. But, but in yeah. all seriousness, we're doing well, but now we're in that home stretch. We got to have our final kick to cross the, the finish line. They're going to be out. So the, the self-survey portion is coming to an end, and now they're going to be out there. Please answer the door. Uh, and then stay socially distanced. It takes like 10 minutes to answer the questions. It's that, not a yeah. huge investment of time and effort, yeah. and it helps our community for the next 10 years. Yeah, we need that money. Again, it's the same federal funds that either could be circulating amongst our small businesses and our residents, or they go back to the federal government. Great point. CARES Act money was uh, apportioned you know, to an extent based on population. Yeah, so we need those federal funds here. Um, they're going to extend online until I think September 31st, and then they're going to head out and start knocking doors. And nobody wants that. But I do want you to know that these five questions, and I've looked through it a couple. You know, of I love times. you, right? I just yes. want to establish that that I love you, that I have great respect for you. That September 30th. I said 31st. Thank oh you. crap! I knew so it was coming. I as soon as he says he correction. loves me, I know that I've said something, <laughs> and I'm going to hear about it. But I did say September 31st. I but I caught it right. Yes. Uh, very good. Know, okay. All right, all right. Um, so anyway, September 30th, there's not 31 days in September. Not even at a leap year. There's not 31 <laughs> days in September. I apologize for that. It happens. Um, but yes, so they're going to they're gonna knock. But they're, none of the questions are related to um, outstanding warrants, outstanding tickets. This information is locked up for 72 years, I think it is. I'll take your word on that. Yeah, we're guessing, but it's 70-something, I can tell you that. It's a long time. It's a very long time, and nobody has access to it. No law enforcement arm, nobody has access to this information for decades. So there is no reason to avoid them. They are not there to cause you any individual harm. So please, please answer the door, fill out your census. You can still go online to fill that out. So, so if you're in the US-1 district uh, of the city, or you know someone in the US-1 district, 
that is one of our lowest performing areas. So please, please, please just knock it out. 10 minutes or less. Are we, do we still have a raffle? You can win money. Come on. Who doesn't like a free gift card? No immigration. No immigration questions. It's, it's, um, it's all very simple. It looks like we're getting a lot of questions. There's a lot more uh, chatter on Facebook, so I'm wondering if we should head over to address some of those. You ready? Sure. You can see him there. You pick and choose. Yeah, so we got Robert Harris, you know, and uh, I appreciate how involved he is in the community. He's always good for some good questions at Coffee with the Mayor anywhere. Loves the city. Great ambassador, uh, in my experience. Is the rest of the city going to get those nice street signs or only South Bend areas? What he's talking about are those kicking like funky chicken, beautiful black decorative street signs that you can see when you're traveling from PSL Boulevard to South Bend along Floresta that turns into Oak Ridge there. So you got the decorative black street signs and they really pop. They're so much better than corrugated steel posts. And will the whole city get them? if the whole city participates in our NICE program. So neighborhood improvement, community engagement. And this is on our city webpage. That was a Kickstarter project. And so Robert, what I would say is if you want those street signs in your neighborhood, get together with some of your fellow homeowners, contact our neighborhood services department. And who's our coordinator? Alex Tosca. Alex Tosca. Thank you very much. So you'll see her contact information under NICE on the city's webpage, cityofpsl.com. And you want to talk about improvement projects for your neighborhood, and it can happen. And Crane Landing absolutely can. I'm a big proponent of it, love it, do want to see it in the whole city. Unfortunately, it's a matter of prioritization and, and you know, the level of investment. We have, over, we have roughly 1,000 lane miles of roads, public roads in the city. That equals a lot of street signs. And you know, we have a lot of competing priorities in the city and we're in uncertain times. Uh, but there is money to do these improvement projects in neighborhoods. And as part of the carrot, you know, uh, governments have carrots and we have sticks. As part of the carrot to get the, the neighborhoods organized and to develop that sense of community, we encourage the neighborhoods to come together, work together on an improvement plan. And so we wanna see you get together and work as a unit. So we encourage it by saying, hey, if you get together and work as a unit on a plan for your community, we will help then carry out the plan. Mm -hmm. So Robert, get together, organize. It can happen. I'm going to give you a challenge. Let's say that we get this done in two years. Please uh, make it happen. Give me a call, 871-5159. Thank you. I Herbert, Herbert Thompson. He's talking about chickens again. Herbert. I gave, you the, I gave you the Encyclopedia Britannica answer on that. You said you never got a clear answer. I gave you a treatise. I've been listening to Alexander Hamilton every day. I, this, I've given you an Alexander Hamilton level of response on this. And they, you know, just so they know, all of these shows are available for viewing on uh, Facebook as well as the city's website. And so I feel like... We beat the crud out of some chickens, <laughs> metaphorically. Yes, yeah, so look, the, right now chickens are not allowed in the city. The county has an ordinance that it's considering, hasn't come back for public hearing yet. And please recheck that answer I already gave you on the, on the chickens. I think it was last month's. Um, it was. We went, I mean, yeah, yeah, we, we had some crazy, yeah, I mean, we, we went deep into chickens. We did. We, we I really... mean, the chickens came home to roost. We, we cracked a few eggs and made an omelet. I mean, we, we more than scratched the surface. Yep, we did. I, I feel we did. All right, what else we got? I, uh, that's all that Avi uh, and our digital storyteller ha have, have put, put up there. Are you seeing some other stuff on there? Well, we they... Do, I, I do, you know, we, we do want to bring up the St. Lucie Cultural Alliance. We do. Um, they always ask if we, we're going to lift the mandate, and it's not your purview. So, and I think we've mentioned that many times, too. I can only see two Herberts and one Robert. Uh, the boardwalk finally open. the part that looks ready. Yes, it, it probably over the next 60 days, that first section is uh, the first section of the new section, the part that you see from PSL Boulevard. 
it, it will uh, be open to the public and we're working on a virtual ribbon cutting. And uh, of course we have Sarah and Avi mm -hmm. uh, in, in the audience. And do you have a specific date yet? We're still firming up the date. But yeah, look, look in the in the next 60 days. And then I can't wait for that connection to be made under the bridge. We are uh, aggressively working with FDOT to get them to firm up their plans to uh, firm up the embankment underneath Port St. Lucie Boulevard Bridge so that we can get the boardwalk in there. So we're just waiting on them. And once they clear the way, then that connection will be made and you'll have a, a half a mile walk on the beautiful St. Lucie River, the North Fork. And uh, Pioneer Park is gonna be coming to life. So it's, it's exciting over there that we're putting the port in Port St. Lucie. There's a lot of great stuff going on over there. That's gonna be great. Can't wait. Can't wait. Historic homes. Yep. We're actually working on another one, one that was built in 1961, so a GDC mm -hmm. special. Yes. And uh, we had to purchase this property anyways for a lift station. And it just happened to have a GDC house Built in 1961, the year of the city's incorporation. It's very serendipitous, and we're studying how we might move it. It's actually in the Sandpiper neighborhood, yep. so it's not a, it's not even a far move trailer ride. I never saw houses get moved really until I moved to PSL, and then I would just see them going down PSL Boulevard all the time. I'm like, yeah. what the heck? I didn't even know you could move a house like that. You can now. That's a GDC home, so I'm going to warn you. <laughs> It may not make it even that short distance. Oh, oh. <laughs> First you called Michelle old, and now this, oh, I tell I'm you. Just kidding. I do, I've told you the story. I used to um, have a GDC model at the corner of US 1 and Rio Mar. It was one of the three models they had on that side of the bridge on the US 1 corridor. And we opened up the walls one time because we had to do some, um, some, some changes, you know, some renovating. Uh, construction paper as, um, <laughs> as insulation was in the walls. So, and they weren't the right size. They weren't exactly a two by four or, you know, nothing was to spec. So it was really, really fun. But they also did have some cute homes. Some of those are really historic. I'm, I'm anxious to see what you guys end up trying to do with those. Cause I don't think it's been decided what you're gonna do with that one yet. We do have another guest. You did mention that you alluded to the fact that we have somebody actually in, in the room that is going to come and join us. Um, our partners at Mid Florida have been it, have been somewhat very, very, very careful. We've noticed a lot of our financial institutions have asked their employees to be incredibly careful so that they can stay and do their duties. But we have someone that we're going to bring up, and I think Avi wants us to take a short break before we do that. If that's okay with you, Mayor? Sure. And I'm not sure it's Avi. It's Gus. You know, Gus is very uptight. He oh. he could he could like. Bust a gasket, blow a gasket anytime. It's very important that we manage Gus. We don't want him upset. He makes us look bad on TV. It's not hard to do, actually, for me. With, for you, it's very difficult. Well, for me, it's, it's very day. easy. He, he exacts his revenge in strange ways. He does. But, but yeah, we'll be back, in, uh, as they used to say, in two and two. All right, very good. Thank you. Welcome back to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the Chamber of Commerce, and I have with me the one, the only, the Gregory Orovec, mayor of this beautiful city. And we Still with you at the People's Dais. At the People's Dais, at your dais. People's Dais. Thank you for letting us um, use you, it today for this, uh, this little talk show we got going on here. We are bringing up a special guest we were asked. Um, I'm familiar with this organization. It's been, it's been around for a while. And they have it's a, renewed. Yes, they it's have a new executive director. It's restarted. New direction, and uh, we're happy to be a part of it. It is through the county. It is the St. Lucie County cult, or the St. Lucie Cultural Alliance. Don't put county in there. Please welcome Aliono Osh. And I said it right. You said it beautifully. Yeah. Oh, good job. So good job. Uh, the mayor was convinced I was going to choke when the mic came on. <laughs> I did not <laughs> say that. I said that's what would be interesting to determine if you did, because you were apprehensive. I was. But it was not spelled you, the way it was. We're spelled. really breaking the tape down, so you put county in. So then you laughed and loosened up, so then there was then less I was, pressure. Okay, yes, because it is not spelled, is it, Oleana? 
I'd like to make things as confusing as possible. It, yes, yes. So, as but exciting as possible. It is a beautiful name, though. No, not confusing. We're talking art, complex. Yes. We, we like complexity, not confusion. Fascination. Yes, we 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 want pro things that are profound. We want to see. We want to find truth and beauty in art. In art. And so he always picks on my art abilities, and I always say, "Not to him, true." What not do you true. mean? Dogs Take playing news. poker is not art. <laughs> We tease, of course. To some Welcome. people it is. I mean. Yes, yes. Why not? Um, if you put it in a frame, it's art. It's in the eye of the beholder is what I've been Yes. Saying. If it's in a frame, it's art. That is my contention. Um, welcome. Thank you. And tell us just a little bit about what the, the Cultural Alliance is all about and what you guys have been charged with. Absolutely. First of all, thank you once again to all the people for having us here in this beautiful dais and for the mayor for having us here. Um, the Cultural Alliance has gone through lots of different variations and right now we are extremely excited about learning the, about the community. I've been here for a little bit over two months now and what I'm calling this is my discovery phase. So I'm talking to as many people as possible, to as many artists as possible, and mostly listening to really understand what the interests and the needs are of our cultural community. What I have discovered is the immense talent that we have here. And it's truly amazingly huge. Everywhere we look, there's an artist, it seems, who is passionate, creative, and talented. And it's an amazing quality to have in a county and city like this. So I was beyond thrilled to learn that. Um, and now we're at a point where we're taking everything that we've learned and really trying to find out what is the best way to us to pull it all together. I do want to say a couple of things. First of all, this city is absolutely amazing in your vision and what you're doing for the artist community. So I want to take my head off to you, Mayor, for everything that you're doing. And you That's have an amazing team We appreciate it. And you have an amazing staff. And that was the next thing I was gonna, that I was going to mention is that how talented, creative, dedicated, passionate your team is and how we work together to make things happen. And I've been in numerous counties and cities throughout the country and honestly have never been as welcome and seen as many collaborations taking place organically as I have in the city. So hey, thank you, sir. Happy to hear that. Absolutely. Come by anytime. <laughs> yeah. So what you're doing with public art, for instance, is a beautiful program. And um, Petty Tobin is talk taking me around the, the city to show me what's been here, what's been done already. And we've been talking to find out how many more incredible plants have, are in the works right now. Um, the fact that you've got National Endowment for the Arts funding, so you're taking public funding and you're also matching it up with government funding is also incredible. And all the sponsors that you have lined up. Yeah, shout out to Kate Parmley and the team who, who worked hard on, on winning the second grant from, the, from the NEA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, I met Linda with the leadership of uh, Mid Florida Event Center, um, and we are talking about doing some more creative things uh, that are so exciting. One of the cool things that I'm bringing back from my past is the whole idea of an incubation program. So how do we take the artists that we have right now and empower them to create and build on their own with our assistance and our guidance? So we're hoping to work together with the city to really take that to the next level, identifying all the musicians, the visual artists, the, the dancers, the choreographers and bringing them all together to be able to perform in the beautiful venue that you have here in the city. So if I was an artist, which I'm not. Um, we're all artists at heart. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a creative, so certainly I appreciate creativity. Uh, tend to put it towards problem solving versus uh, physical medium. But uh, for those who are artists out there, how would they connect with you? So basically go into our website, artsstlucy.org, A-R-T-S-T-Lucy.org. Artsstlucy.org. Mm -hmm. We have all the information there. We're building a number of different leagues. So if you're a musician, we'll have a special league for you. If you're a visual artist, again, theater performances, what have you. And then we're going to try to bring those leagues together and work with various businesses and existing venues to really um, provide a stage for our artists to perform and, and really blossom. So we're also talking to the business community. There's no reason why we shouldn't have beautiful art, local art, hanging in the hospitals, in lobbies, in restaurants, in unusual spaces. So how do we get really creative and make sure that art is part of every single day of our lives and that we can all benefit from it? Because art is really the only universal language that we have. And especially now when things are a little challenging for our community and for our country, arts bring people together and they heal. Now, you know, we have such a great history with art as well. We have more artists in the Florida um, Hall of Fame than any other area. 
thanks to BD Bacchus and of course the highwaymen. So we have such a, lo- a, a, a very deep, long history and so much to celebrate, but we have yet to kind of um, culminate into an arts scene. And I know that Patty Tobin, and I've served on public art for some time now, is her dream is to have sort of an, a, a cultural um, working, living area that's similar to something they have down south of us. Mm-hmm. And it really does seem interesting because I think that through through organization, we can see this culminate into another economic impact for our area. And I think that is definitely the goal all the way across. Because so some people will say it's art. That's great. That's lovely. But art can really be a huge business entity for any area. It is a huge economic driver. There's no question about it. There are studies upon studies upon studies. Art's also incredibly impactful when it comes to education and really helping our kids to learn better. The benefits of the arts are indisputable. Yeah. So what we would like to do is also call on our business community. And if you have a vacant space, for instance, let's energize it. Let's put some art in there. Let's have art in creative and unusual places. Mm-hmm. I think that there's so many different opportunities here right now for us to truly infuse arts into our community and bringing the arts together. And you're absolutely right. I think lots of our artists right now are flying under the radar. So how do we spotlight, shine, and really make sure that we're working together? Yep. Very good. Um, the, the website again, in case they're interested or if they want to be a part of it. And remember art is, is more than just painting or sculpture. It is, um, writing, it is music, it is performing, it is all of that stuff. So if somebody wants to be a part of this, uh, where, sh- how should they contact you? It's artsstlucy.org. Now, and I'm, I'm checking it right now. I'm putting it in. I'm going to bookmark it on my phone in case I didn't have it. In case you run into an artist, which is, is definitely not me. And this is such an exciting time to be a part of this organization. One of the other initiatives that I would love to put in place is to bring the business community and the arts community together. So if you have an emerging business leader, for instance, let's match that individual up with, with a board organization, a nonprofit organization that needs board members, so we can again begin to build the bridge between the arts and the business and unite our community. That's just one example of many, many others that we're putting in place right now. Thank you. Thank you, Oleona Osh. I said it twice. Thank you. Um, okay. For, for being is, with us today. I was misspelling it or not, I mean, just put an extra S. It's art, St. Lucie. That, art, not arts. Not arts, art. Art, art. Just art, one Saint art. Lucie. If you put two S's in there, then it'll. Then it won't kick it you. It won't get you there. But, you know, when in doubt, people, just Google your thing. I, it, you know, it works. Yes, that's normally what I do. St. Lucie. Cultural Alliance. That's what you could Google. Well, thank you for being with us. Oli thank you so much for having me. And welcome. Thank well, we look forward to a lot of good things and uh, getting better every year. That's a big part. So you had mentioned the strategic vision and the plan. We take our strategic plan very seriously here. As you can tell, if you go to cityofpsl.com slash strategic plan, we have seven foundational goals. And uh, Trissa hates when I go through all seven because no one, no, everyone leaves. But the one that I just want to talk about is uh, culture, nature, and fun. So it's built, it's in the DNA of our strategic plan. And, and then also we're talking about art here and you made the point of how it touches our lives. We want it to touch our lives every day. We want to be a beautiful city mm-hmm. also. And art helps with that. So, uh, and being safe and beautiful is the is number one goal of our, of our strategic plan. So art is definitely part of it, it's encoded. And we're adding it everywhere we get a chance. We have some really special pieces on the way. Uh, there's one coming to the Selvitz Bayshore Roundabout. But for me, my personal one, and I was joking with you before about truth and beauty. I actually find that to be true. So for me, I have a calling to the water in the Florida environment. Yes. That's really what touches my yep. soul. So it's not a surprise then that I like art that reflects Florida's natural environment. And that's that's how I skew, you know. So give me a give me a guy Harvey, you know, yep. that kind of stuff. Something colorful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig it. They have a, it's called uh, the sail, and it is basically a large sail off of a, a sailboat that's going out to Becker, and it's just incredible. That look, one is look incredible. forward look forward to seeing it. That's personally one of my favorite, most favorite large scale pieces that'll be in the city. And we just saw it again this last Monday night at the council meeting uh, because it's going out there in the roundabout on Becker Road. 
And that one is beautiful. And I have to say that my taste runs more towards the abstract. As you know, I typically like to be Switzerland and most things. So I, I feel like my art is very Switzerland too. You could interpret it in any way that you wish, but I love the sail because I think it is, it is somewhat abstract. Um, you know, you do recognize it as a sail, but it is a bit. Yeah, it's not an actual boat. No, it's not. Uh, it's not made of cloth. So anyway, that's sort of my taste as well. So I like that one very, very much. There's some other stuff coming in um, at different places. And, and um, your staff has done a great job of getting uh, creative with trying to find some art to put in our area. Yeah, there, there's some different types of pieces going out in front of the new section of Verona. Yeah, oh, yeah. I like those, too. Um, I do like those. Those the ones that are going there at Crosstown where the new Verona, they came before the public arts and they have um, their trees. And I think they're very, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to that, too. I do like art. I do. I promise. Even though he teases me. Well, you know, we go back and we were talking about COVID before and, and I was just trying to make some market arguments. Art's not that big of a deal. Art doesn't matter. I mean, even if you just threw away that it's healing and it's good for kids to learn and it's part of the core curriculum and there's that. Mm -hmm. All right. Why does art, why does art that touches people hold value and actually increase in value over time? Why can, uh, why can there be an auction in New York and a piece of art sell for $50 million? It has value. Yeah. And it's always perceived value and it does have value. For sure. So it stands the test of time. Art, like gold, yeah. has, has withstood the test of time. And the city has a wonderful uh, an art league, Port St. Lucie Art League, that's been moving mountains. And Joanne, its president, has been doing a phenomenal job of bringing the visual arts community together under that umbrella. And bringing it back to the sponsor, if you didn't know, the Mid-Florida uh, Credit Union Event Center. Now I can just call it the Event Center now that I got the whole name in there. <laughs> uh, the Event Center has an art gallery. Mm -hmm. It does now. Yes, it always has. And it's, it's lovely. It has. So, yes. And we're actually talking about maybe doing some musical concerts outside. I'm going to give a little preview. Uh, yes, absolutely. Oh, there's a lot more to come. Yeah, that's a lot more to come. We can't wait till we can get together. Or I just saw something on Facebook the other day where they set up these little pods for each household properly socially distanced. I saw that too. That I'm, I'm down with that. Just so, yeah. you know, when people get into this and they're like, oh, you don't want to... No, I want to get to yes safely. Yes. So that means if we can plot it out and create corridors and make the restroom safe, I'm down. I'm a let's get to yes kind of guy, but let's do it the right way. Absolutely. And we say that at the chamber too. We want you out. We want you out patroning all of our small businesses. We want you out eating at our restaurants, but we want you out doing it safely and using the CDC guidelines. But don't misinterpret anything that we say as stay home and take cover you know it is get out but get out and do it safely i saw that concert my husband saw that we saw it come on tv they built individual like yes like 10 by 10 platforms for people at a concert and i thought why are we not doing this anyway it's like scaffolding yeah 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 i don't want to have to fight a crowd but to have my own little platform space for just me my husband and my cooler sounds like the best way to go to a concert yeah, anyway definitely down with that it was not in this country though but hopefully i'm sure it will get here well, so. I mean, American ingenuity, come on. We are the best. They can do it, we can do it. Yep. Well, All right. Thank you again for being there. Thank you for having us. Do you us. want to take any more questions? You good to go? What do you want to do? It's your show. We're good. We're good. Appreciate everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, Maureen, our digital expert, technically a digital storyteller. <laughs> the newspaper cries every day. Oh, boo, we want Maureen back. Oh, no, Gil, right you here. can't have her. She's ours now, pal. Oh, oh wow, she's gonna write a terrible article now about me just because I taunted him. See, see how it works? That's how the world works. But we have her, she's out there. She will uh, shepherd your questions towards me. We still actually have some from 60 days ago that I'm gonna, we're gonna put our heads together right now and make sure that uh, Maureen has the answers because we care about you, we want to get back to you, we value you. You're good about that. You always want to answer everybody's questions. Try, try as, try as I may. All right, as well, I thanks might. again. Thanks to all the city staff. Thank you to Mid Florida. Um, thank you to allowing Paychex to come on. And of course, a huge thank you to our guest, Oleona Osh and um, the mayor. Couldn't do it without you. It is coffee with the mayor. So without the mayor, it's just coffee.
I want to close so badly with the Rocks battle cry from the old days, but not enough people will get it, so I won't do it. But who cares what other thank, people thank, think? Thank you, everybody. Wait. No, I was just feeling you gave me a lot of energy today. I hadn't seen you in a while. I, I just, know we never see each other anymore. If you no, I'll I'll see everyone later. Everybody but you know where I was going with that. Have a have a great month, PSL. Please stay well. We got school opening up. Let's not be surprised when some teachers, unfortunately, catch it. Let's not be surprised if some kids catch, catch it. Let's be vigilant. Let's be safe. Let's stick together. Let's care about each other. And let's get through it. All right. Everyone. All right. This meeting's adjourned. Have a great day. See you next time. <laughs>